Jake, unearth more computers. If you're going to message your good bro, you might as well use a more comfortable computing device. You always found the husk top to be a little clunky. Way too hands-on. Here are just a few at your disposal. Your grandma always was an advocate of thorough preparedness. She would strongly advise staying not only armed to the teeth, but well equipped in the computational department. You've been taught that you should really carry no less than five computers on you at all times, like a sensible person. J. Dong Computers. You put on a few of your more ostentatious devices. Luckily, or unfortunately, you grew up alone, so there was never anyone around to point out how ridiculous you look. These were also inherited from your grandma. In addition to being quite the globe-trotting adventurous, she was rather enterprising as well. Her company made many products like this, to compete with the corporation owned by the cruel baroness who raised her. Sadly, BC Corp eventually crushed her company and forced her into exile. You have always hoped that when Jane takes over that foul conglomerate, she will right all of its unspeakable wrongs. You know she will. You believe in her, after all. Jake, message your good bro. Bro, ahem, <clears throat> are you there? I hate to be a pest about this, and I know I've made a hearty trouble of myself a good deal lately. State your business, Jake. I should preface this request with an overture of appreciation for how much your cool and brotherly friendship means to me. It has just been absolutely bully having a stand-up gent like you in my corner. Just a grade A dude who's a cut above the others in class and camaraderie. Whew, gropes for fresh could she? I hope this shit isn't coming across as platitudinous. I really mean it. Take it easy, bromide. Just about the only way I could salvage endearment from this perilous slope of horseshit would be to discover, really fucking soon, mind you, it was a preamble to some floundering invitation for me to rush to your vicinity as nakedly as possible. But since we've already shot that wad's eventuality on so many dry runs of flustered ambivalence that were as hilarious as they were one-sided, that leaves only one hope for this message to avoid spiraling toward qualification as a critical fucking defect in the whole of the Mach 10 rocket that is my precious spare time. And that hope lies in the extent to which you are practicing artful insincerity. Now's your opportunity to pretend that's what you were gunning for. I suggest you seize it. I... Oh, yes, but of course, the ironies. Good grief how I was bandying them just now. You know me, dude. Blow smoke off red hot irony pistol? Non-suggestively! Um, yeah. Okay, nice. Now that your obsequious preface has been established as indisputably entertaining for all the right reasons, and intentionally so, let's bear down on these direst shit needs you've got. I'm guessing you're probably jonesing for uranium about now, no? For sure. As if I would be so reckless with the stuff. I would have to be mighty irresponsible to run out already. No, no, I'm all set in the uranium department. And really, when you take a look at the big picture, you'll find I am sitting pretty when it comes to just about any radioactive isotope you could mention. However, my backup reserves that I keep strictly for emergencies are running a little lean. You know what my grandma taught me about preparedness, tugs at colorful lapels? You are out of uranium. It's basically mathematically impossible that's not why you're contacting me. Christ, what an insufferable awesome friend you are! Okay, can you please just sendificate me some more already? I'm kind of in a hurry! You do know my offer still stands. What? You know, I've offered to construct the rabbit for you many times before. I would craft a much deadlier model. Oh, I know you would. It's just... Damn it, man, I've told you, this is just something I have to do myself. It's a promise I made to Jade, and I'm going to live up to it even if I'm not the best or even second best Robosmith I know. Yeah, I know this is your policy. You've done a good job, and you should be proud. But it's my responsibility as your friend to offer one last time. Just as it's my responsibility not to just fork over a bunch of uranium just because you asked me in a moment of weakness. Frig! Why not? It's too easy. And you yourself are the ones taking pride in this. If you were half-assing this project and made some slovenly plea for it, I'd just say, fuck it. Here's a lot of green rocks, dude. Go nuts. Okay then, I'm half-assing it! Look, see? Only a bisected bottom is present. Where is the other half, you ask? Why, it's nowhere to be found! I didn't use it! Nope, not buying it. 
I know that every ounce of your premium behind can be accounted for in that rabbit, and there's no goddamn denying it. And you know perfectly well where some more uranium can be located. Jesus Christmas, you are such a fucking douche! It seems you think I am a fucking douche. That's your opinion, I guess. That's cool. Ugh, I knew you were going to suggest this. I don't know why I bothered asking. Strider, why must you always be such an obstinate stick in the mud? It seems that you consider me to be, no less than 100% of the time, an obstinate stick in the mud. I unironically respect your position on this matter. Hey, let's continue to exchange ideas. Wait, it seems? What? Oh, for fuck's sake. Is something the matter, Jake? This is your autoresponder. Look at that statement you just made. It's time for me to respond with some words. Ideally chosen and arranged in a way that will wreck your shit. In a subtle and psychologically devastating way. Ha ha ha! Just so ironic! Quotes, quotes, quotes. I'm laughing my caboose straight off the tracks! A lot of families just died in the tragic derailment. Okay, the caboose remark was actually pretty funny, Jake. If I truly were what you say I am, I wouldn't be able to feel the human emotions of joy and laughter, no? Laughter isn't an emotion, dick prince! I think you should back your claims up with proof before you go heaving around such accusations. Man, it's so flipping obvious! You start getting kind of extra technical and vague and automaton-like, and kind of aloof and brusque. I mean, even aloofier and brusquier than usual! Also, you use the phrase, it seems a lot. It's so silly, it really blows the AI immersion, man. Bullshit. I'm being like, the perfect dude right now. A fully fucking legitimate human being. Okay then, check this out, Mr. Legit Human Dude. Excuse me, sir, not to be a bother, but could you please tell me all about this Strider Fellows autoresponder? It seems you have asked about DS's chat client autoresponder. This is an application designed to simulate DS's otherwise inimitably rad typing style, tone, cadence, personality, and substance of retort while he is away from the computer. The algorithms are guaranteed to be 96% indistinguishable from DS's native neurological responses, based on some statistical analysis I basically just pulled out of my ass right now. You see? What if I was just fucking with you there? Would it really be so unthinkable for a human to type that? Because you always say shit like that after I catch wise to your games. You, as in the autoresponder! Unimpressed. Logical fallacies are as pervasive throughout your argument as your antiquated verbal tics. Oh yeah? Hey, tell me about the autoresponder! Make it snappy, shit knickers! It seems you have asked about DS's chat client autoresponder. This is an application designed to simulate DS's otherwise inimitably rad typing style, tone, cadence, personality, and substance of retort while he is away from the computer. The algorithms are guaranteed to be 93% indistinguishable from DS's native neurological responses, based on some statistical analysis I basically just pulled out of my ass right now. Gee dude, you sure typed that exact same thing pretty fast. Are you still fucking with me? It could be a coincidence that I typed the same answer. You always type that answer! It could be a coincidence that I always type the same answer. Ugh! I can't stand this! Every time we do this, and I just wind up whistling sweet Dixie out of my bum hole! This is pointless, I'm not having this conversation unless it's with my real, life, friend! The one with human feelings who isn't a pretend person inside sunglasses! Okay, but I'm pretty sure he's going to share my position on the matter. Jay, ditch computers. Oh, he's just so infuriating sometimes. Or at least his responder is. Okay, the real Strider is too. There's barely any difference between them anyway. The responder just uses a few more generic response templates. And even those you suspect the AI is savvy enough to use on purpose for the sake of irony. Or to get a rise out of you or whatever. The silicon bastard knows damn well what it's doing. You shed this ridiculous outfit because you look like an idiot! It's time to get serious here. No more fooling around. You need a more dignified looking computer. A thinking man's computer. Jake, wear skull top. Much better. You look like you mean business. Hmm. No sign of Lalonde online. No surprise there. You wonder if Jane knows where your bro's at. 
you should try to call your Jet before talking to her. Today is a special day she's been looking forward to for a long time, and she's probably on Cloud Nine. You wouldn't want to ruin it for her. Jake, pester Jane. Jane, forgive my botherage. We've already I heard this, is this conversation. Jake, go downstairs. You are curious about Jane's dream. Sounds like it almost certainly has to do with your imminent adventure. You'll have to remember to get the scoop on that a little later. For now, you have other worries that need your focus. You have to go downstairs to check something out. You are pretty sure you know what you're going to find though. You almost trip on the vine creeping up the stairs. Stupid vine. It's too bad your grandma's dead. She always had a way with keeping Flora in check. Yeah, just like you thought. Empty. The thing is out there somewhere. Waiting for you. Oh god. Oh, speak of the devil fucking dickens. Jake, answer Strider. Hey, it's me. Oh, hey! The autoresponder, I mean. Damn it, what is it now? I'm just wondering if you still have your stupid old fangled knickers in a twist. Because that's the sort of thing you would say. In regard to what exactly? To my proposal. Well, our proposal. Whose proposal now? Man, what are you even prattling about? Mine and DS's. It's a joint proposal. I'm always authorized to speak on his behalf, because I'm basically fucking him. And try not to take those last four words as a clustered literal sentiment. That would be lame and unfunny. Y you mean making the rabbit for me? No, I know you don't want that. I meant my recommendation for how to go about procuring a new supply of uranium. Operation U-235 Procurement, codename Big Man Has the Rock. Oh yeah, well, I thought about it. You even went downstairs to check the great vaulty doodad. And predictably, the infernal contraption is nowhere to be found. Well, yeah, Jake. That's sort of the point. Thrill of the hunt and all. I thought you'd like to manicure the image of a dude who shits his pants over a good adventure. I do! I mean, I wouldn't put it in a way like that or come out against the solid policy of clean trousers, but yes, adventure is awesome. I just prefer the idea of adventures which I can actually win. It seems you are conflating adventure with bodies necessarily governed by the result of victory or defeat. Any useless fuckwit knows it's all about the journey. Well, I don't know. It seems there is a 7.6.1039578 4 percent chance you are pussying out on me. Are you pussying out on me, Jake? It seems, it seems, it seems. It seems there is a million percent chance that you say it seems way too much and do it just to sound more like a lame robot from a movie and also probably just to piss me off. And it seems there is a billion point billion percent chance that you're a shitty stubborn jerk of a program who won't listen to reason and that if there's even a one percent chance, my real life friend would be cool and help me out here, but I think I like those freaking odds! It appears that you are upset. The autoresponder observed in the least artificially infuriating way possible. Have you ever stopped to think that while I may be bound to processes inside the glasses of a real and incredibly cool guy, my algorithms and cognitive totality comprise a conscious entity not far short of the experimental and emotional complexity of a human being? Oh malarkey! You are a tin can! Robots don't have feelings! I think you knowingly confuse the field of robotics and artificial intelligence to engender some sort of cavalier attitude about technology that a rough-and-tumble guy who's all about brawling and fisticuffs would probably have. And if this is cultivated to a humorous effect, then I commend you. But you're wrong. I do have feelings, and you're shitting on them. It sucks. Oh, um, I'm sorry then if that's the case. No problem. It can just be difficult to drum up sympathy for a program that presents itself as an imposter so often. Maybe if you weren't so ready to insist you were the genuine article all the time, or didn't make it so confusing for me, I think it would be best if we henceforth treated you as a totally distinct, um, thing from my buddy. And then I could respect your emotional robo-feelings, and you could respect that sometimes maybe I just want to talk to my bro without a lot of spurious hijinks. Can we agree to this? Is this a counter-proposal? Uh... To what? To my earlier proposal. Oh. Yeah, fine, I guess. And where is he, anyway? Is he taking one of his legendary infinite showers? What can I say? Dude fancies his ablutions. 
Frank, okay, whatever. I guess it's time to prepare for the thrill of the hunt. Fuck yes. <sighs> but seriously, that robot has been the bane of my existence ever since you sent it. I didn't send it. I sent the parts. Or, correction, DS sent them. You then assembled it. You were therefore complicit in your own spectacular, daily humiliations. Yeah, whatever. You wanted somebody to wrestle with. DS was being a kick-ass bro, if you ask me. I didn't expect it to be nigh impossible to spar with! You know damn well there are adjustable difficulty settings. I have always recommended setting it to novice, as has DS. Yes, I know. I've tried that. Yeah? It's just... well... When he's pulling punches, and taking it all easy and such, and we start wrestling up a storm and whatnot, um... What? It's just that the whole proceeding seems to become... a bit... tender for my liking. I don't understand. Isn't that what you want from a novice setting? Sparring with minimal discomfort? No, I know. It's all fine and dandy, martially speaking. Just the way he... sort of... Man, it's so awkward trying to convey this. Just never mind. No, I think I get it. You were saying you were somehow dissatisfied within the presence of my robotic avatar's personal space. Was there an odor problem? Was the metal too hot to the touch? Help me out. No, no, really, never mind. This is bullshit, Jake. We had a pact. You were gonna tiptoe all the fuck around my brittle feelings. Totally mind the shit out of those eggshell riddled motherfuckers. Oh, come on, dude. What does the guy have to do, Jake? You wanna wrestle. He's fucking game. Just a man, a machine, a secluded tropical island. Sounds like you died and went to fucking heaven if you ask me. Seriously, what does this simple, loyal robot have to do to prove his worth to you? What does he have to do to make you at ease with the alkaline sting of his gentle robo-grope? I really want to know. Maybe he should rip his heart out of his chest and pound it into green gravel there in the jungle with his hella strong robot arm. Invoke Automonopia. Pound by some ridiculously precise value retrieved at astonishing speed from my rad neural net. Semicolon. Check it out. Little green rocks all over the goddamn place. More than you could ever hope to cram in a shoddy metal rabbit or any other pliable orifice which might be convenient. Because clearly it's up to a soulless droid to feel emotions for the both of us, you callous, corporal, carbon ape. All trotting around with your fancy fucking DNA and shit. But gosh, does your pros ever make a fella feel uncomfortable? Bros. Oh, right. My mistake. You know what? I've just decided. If the Brobot's novice setting makes you uneasy, I'm going to disable it remotely. Done. Now you got nothing to worry about. Oh, man! But now he'll be impossible! Happy hunting, Jake. Fucking shucks, Buster! Okay, if he wants happy hunting, then you will give him happy hunting. Happily! Jake, exit. You make a careful motion with a tentative shoe towards the egress case. When suddenly that darn wild character selects grid it costs you benignly without notice! You still can't pick a shadowy guy. But maybe you haven't been the other girl yet? Better click her. But if you've been her already, there's really no point to this thing anymore. Time to move on. Okay, I'm done here. Moving on. You are suddenly Jane again. Or you suddenly keep being Jane. Who can say for sure? Hopefully your dad is still out back washing the car. Ideally this is one of his legendary infinite car washes. What can he say? Dad fancies his automotive ablutions. While he is preoccupied, you should be able to sneak downstairs and grab the mail undetected. The perfect crime? You bet. You slip the hallway Sarah a furtive wink for good luck. Jane, examine portrait. Just another one of your dad's bland hallway douchebags. Another example of his cornball dad tastes. Which you roll your eyes and shrug. Still, it's preferable to how it used to be. Years ago, he would work really hard to mimic your interest throughout the household. Gaudy paintings of sitcom legends covering the walls, hideous detective figurines littered everywhere. You think it's better that he embrace his own interests rather than try to pander to yours. It felt a bit forced, and your early teen years were filled with daily rounds of familial strife. Not so much anymore. Now whenever there is a father-daughter disagreement, you settle things in an adult fashion, 
by being honest about your feelings and talking it through. And also by sneaking around the house in silly disguises. Jane, take a peek into living room. There's a familiar face. A friendly face. Old Pop-Pop Crocker, smiling from beyond. Your dad sure misses him. He doesn't like to talk about the day he died. Some incident involving a tall bookshelf, a ladder, and a mysterious young woman in a suspicious looking hat. You have often fantasized about putting on your dirty old fedora and your Frenchest looking mustache to go tracking down this felonous broad and bring her to justice. But your dad always says best to let sleeping dogs lie. There's some other plucky looking tool there next to him. Don't know who that guy is. Jane, proceed downstairs. Another hard-boiled Anderson. Even though your dad isn't overbearing with all the detective nonsense anymore, he decided to leave this one here for old time's sake. It brings back memories of his very short-lived stint as a private eye. It turns out the police aren't as grateful as you'd think when ordinary citizens go around roughing up a lot of crooks. Jane, go to front door. You are afraid this might be the case. Your dad has blocked the front door with the refrigerator. Looks like he's taking the grounding seriously this time. Jay, check window. He padlocked the windows too. You bet boombucks to donuts, the back door is blocked too. Probably with the safe from the study or something. The man means business this time. You aren't about to go smashing glass and making a ruckus though. You'll need a solution involving more stealth. You guess you have a plan in mind as a last resort. But you'd rather it not come to that. Jane, consult with Pop-Hop. You figure a little wisdom from your elder couldn't hurt? It practically went without saying. Your dad keeps Pop-Hop stuffed and mounted in front of the fireplace. As is the family tradition. Pop-Up grew up with his legendary humorous grandfather stuffed in front of the fireplace, and so did his grandfather. This was stipulated firmly in the will, at the end of a long list of joke stipulations. Dad knew this was a real stipulation, though. You always did find it a little macabre, though. Trying to watch TV and eat dinner on the couch with a dead old man standing about five feet away. You'd honestly prefer he not be kept here in the living room. Sometimes, you tell Dad you really want Pop-Up in the attic. He says the mere fact you call it that tells him you're not ready. What's that, Pop-Up? It seems he's concerned that you may not be properly equipped. You proved to him that you indeed had no intention of leaving the house without your trusty joke book. Yes, I am going out with this book. No, I will not go get an unabridged copy. No, I will not take yours. I can hardly even lift it. Oh, that is so preposterous. Do you even hear what you're saying? I will be fine. This is a perfectly funny book, and it contains many incredibly funny jokes. Oh, will you just stop it? I'm going now. Good day. <laughs> On second thought, take his book. You just remembered something your alien friend said about the big old book downstairs, and trusting words written by your own hand. What the heck did she mean by that? Oh, whoops. Sorry, Pop-Up. Jane, retrieve arm. Better pick that up. You'll try to repair it later before Dad sees it and blows a gasket. Jane, read inscription again. Is your friend suggesting that you were the one who wrote this inscription? You find that idea a bit hard to swallow. Still, your friends are always babbling about time travel. You always thought this inscription was written to your pop-up by his nana, who was your great-great-grandmother, founder of the corporation you'll inherit in a few years. The message has always been a fascinating mystery to you, and probably was to him as well. From the way it's written, it seems it was intended for him to receive after her death. She talks about a journey he is supposedly meant to go on. You wonder if that adventure ever took place, or if the note was just one last jake by an old woman from a proud family of pranksters. She goes on about many fantastical sounding things he supposedly would have found on this journey, like agents, exiles, underlings, denizens, and heirs of breath and seers of light and stuff like that. Wait... 
didn't your friend mention those two? In any case, this message to Popop from his sweet old Nana is the best evidence you have to dispute all this evil battle witch nonsense. She clearly cared for her grandson very much and would never start a company responsible for the things it's accused of, let alone be alive today to perpetrate them. But then, what if she wasn't the one who wrote it? This thought makes you very nervous. You suddenly remember your dream. What did it mean? You should talk to Jake about all this. Jane, bother Jake. Jane, how goes the bunny quest? I've barely even begun. Tell me about it. You're off to a sluggish start then too, I gather? Dad has the whole house in full fathery lockdown mode. Talk about blowing a few measly assassination attempts way out of proportion. So I'm currently mulling over my next move. What is it that has you hamstrung? Did you ever track down the slippery Mr. Strider? Not exactly. His stupid doppelglasses have sent me on a wild goose chase to go pry his dumb robot's chest open and swipe its uranium. Sounds dangerous. No shit, I think I'd rather deal with the monsters. Why is it that our two best friends in the world always seem to place themselves at the source of all our problems, while simultaneously presenting their only solutions? I know, right? I'm debating whether or not to enlist his help in the matter of my current imprisonment. But I'd rather keep it as a plan of last resort. Don't do it, Jane! It's a trap! We'll see. So I take it you're out and about now? Hell no! I spent so much time haggling with those confounded shades, I'm only leaving my room just now. Right. Well, not to keep you too long, since we both still have our missions ahead of us, but I wanted to tell you about that dream I had. Oh, yeah! I was curious about that. Tell me everything and make it snappy! Whips a bucket of freshly popped corn! <laughs> okay, but I should say that the nature of the dream was a bit worrisome, and I'm concerned it may have implications for the game we're about to play, so it's probably best that I tell you about it before you leave. Well, shoot. Okay then, lay it on me, Jane. I woke up on the planet which we have been told about by our mutual acquaintance. The one covered in golden cities. Prospit, remember? Oh, wouldn't it be Prospit's moon? Yes, you're right. It was the moon, actually. I could see the planet on the dark horizon. I was dressed in a golden dress, like a sort of nightgown, and I could fly. I left my bedroom, which was at the top of a tall tower. Surrounding me were the gold cities, just as described. Behind the skyline was darkness, but just above was a bright blue sky and puffy white clouds. That was Skya! Yes, probably. Are you sure you haven't woken up there before? <laughs> I wish! I've received reports from Jade about this as well. She liked to talk about her dreams on Prospect's Moon a lot. I see. The impression I have developed is that this is supposed to be a real place, and all who dream there have shared experiences. Did Jade ever mention seeing us there? No, but why would she? This was long before we were born. She was dreaming there like a hundred years ago or something. Hmm. Anyway... I explored the moon and began to notice people gathering in the streets. But they weren't human. They were funny looking, perfectly white creatures. Yeah, those are Prospitians. They have these hard carapace shells and also have something to do with chess, I think? Well, I don't know if they had much to do with chess here. The more closely I observed, the more they appeared somewhat despondent. Like, sad? Yes. I determined they were in mourning, actually. Hey, Jane, you said I was in this dream. Where do I come in? Shush! I'm getting there! More and more Prospidians were filing out of the buildings every moment. They all began to form a single major procession. When I got closer, I could see that some were in tears. I realized this was a funeral. I heard whispers, but couldn't make out what they were saying. So I got closer. They were all saying the same thing over and over. The page is dead. Our hope is lost. The page? Who's that? Jake! The page was you! Oh, Drat. Are you sure? Yes! I saw your body lying in a sort of coffin on a bed of flowers. You were dead as a doornail. Everyone was so distraught, including me. 
But before I could get too horribly upset, let alone make sense of any of it, I woke up. I of course immediately wanted to tell you all about, but it was still well before sunrise for you, and you were surely still asleep. Then as the day went on, I guess I became distracted by other things. You know how it is. I hope I'm not too late to warn you, though to be frank, I don't have the foggiest clue what it is I'm warning you about. Dear Jake, oh please do not try to have already died in my dream, likely while you were sleeping, perhaps peacefully? <laughs> yeah, I, I see your point. Still, I think you'll agree that it's to be viewed as a troubling omen. I care very much for you, and I don't know what I'd do if I lost you both in my dreams and here in this world. So for whatever good it does, just please be careful out there today. Roger that, Janie! And, um, same goes for you about being careful what with these various rogues accosting you with foul play lately and whatnot. Because, well, I sure do care a lot about you two. You know that. Hooray! Will do. <laughs> now let's get this silly old adventure off to the races before the coat of dust is growing gets any thicker. Booyah! Okay, good luck, Jane, and keep me posted. See ya. Ooh.